Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. Today we begin a new book, the book of Judges. It feels like we've just flew through the book of Joshua, but here we are in the book of Judges. And the book of Judges is kind of a disappointing book. Um, not that the book itself is disappointing, but the story that it tells is disappointing because time and time again, the Israelites fall away from the Lord. The Lord, and they repent, and the Lord picks them back up, and it seems like they're getting their act together, and then they fall away. And the same thing repeats over and over and over again. And and this happens all the way through the book. And what we find is that in the first chapter, we see the very reason for this. I think chapter 1 is a lot of times underestimated for just how much it explains this whole experience that the Israelites went through uh, in this falling away, coming back, and falling away again. Because chapter 1 describes for us their um, reluctancy, uh, their failure in driving out the inhabitants of the land. Matter of fact, the, the last part of chapter 1 really focuses on this uh, when it talks about Manasseh did not take possession of Beth Shean. Uh, Ephraim did not drive out the Canaanites. Zebulun did not drive out the inhabitants. Asher did not drive out the inhabitants. Naphtali did not drive out the inhabitants. The Amorites forced the sons of Dan into the hill country. All these tribes, they did not take over the land, fully take over the land. They didn't drive out the inhabitants. And so these inhabitants, just as God had predicted, were constantly drawing their hearts away from the Lord. Drawing them into uh, idol worship and serving other gods besides the true and living God. And so this is basically the explanation for their whole experience. And this really led to three different consequences. Uh, one, they didn't get to enjoy the land. Had they driven out the inhabitants, they would have had it all to themselves. They could have spread out. They could have taken it easy. They could have enjoyed the land, the fullness of the land. They could have walked in obedience to the Lord, enjoying those feasts that God had gave them for their enjoyment. Uh, life could have been good. But... Uh, they couldn't enjoy the land because they were constantly having these conflicts with these inhabitants. The second thing is, them not driving out uh, the inhabitants led to what we've already mentioned, this, this yo-yo experience of uh, doing well, prospering because they're in obedience to the Lord, and then them falling away from the Lord and then entering into hardship. And then the same thing happening again. And so the inhabitants caused that. The third thing is, is that it kept them from fully being able to pass on to their children uh, their heritage, their spiritual heritage. Matter of fact, this happened even with that first generation that had entered into the land. In, in chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, All that generation, all that generation is talking about the, the generation of Joshua and Caleb, um, all the elders that were there at the time when they took over the land, all that generation also were gathered to their fathers. That means that they died. And there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord, nor yet the work which he had done for Israel. And so this is kind of a, a knock against that generation for not passing these things on to that generation. But I think also this generation... Uh, struggled in staying faithful to the Lord because of the inhabitants of the land. And not only did they perhaps not receive the teachings that they needed in a positive sense, but they had a lot of these negative things happening also that was coming at them. And so when we look at our own spiritual lives, we see that we would have the same these three same consequences if we don't fully take hold of what we have in Christ. We mentioned in a, in a previous devotion that when we get to this point in Israel's history, the land uh, can represent Christ. Uh, the Israelites are in the land just as we are in Christ. And the land was there for their enjoyment. And just as Christ is there for our enjoyment. And, and so as we think about our own spiritual lives, we have to think to ourselves, have I fully laid hold of everything that I have in Christ Jesus? Have I really taken full possession of what that means to be in Christ. Do, have I fully surrendered to Him? Have I given Him my whole self? 
or do I allow those dark corners to persist? Do I still allow those little sins to continue on? Uh, we all have to ask ourselves that. Do I allow things in my life that uh, I know cause me to stumble and to fall into sin? Do we leave those things out? You know, it's not only sin that causes us to, to fall away, or, or it's not only sin that we should be worried about in our spiritual lives. Now that's, that's obviously something that we need to avoid, but sometimes it's the stuff that is not sinful that can pull our hearts away from, from God. Um, and for each person, it might be something different. For one person, it might be TV. TV is a distraction from them, for them and keeps their mind and their hearts distracted so that they can't really fully focus on Christ and therefore sets them up for failure when it comes to overcoming temptation. Or it might be a hobby, uh, it could be a relationship, it could be a lot of different things. The point is, is that we need to take full possession of who we are in Christ to drive out anything that's drawing our hearts away from that and to basically clear the land, clear our hearts, to give our hearts wholly to the Lord and to live completely in Him and to, to get to that point uh, as Paul expresses in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, that it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. I have driven out all selfishness, all self-desire, all um, self-interest. I've driven all that out. Why? So that I can possess more of Christ. The more I possess of Christ, the more victory I have. And so if, I, if I'm not experiencing that, I... I'm going to not, for one, I'm not going to have the full enjoyment. Just as they didn't fully enjoy the land, I won't fully enjoy what I have in Christ if, if I'm uh, kind of riding the fence. You know, one of the, I think the most miserable people on earth, uh, to a certain extent, are those who are kind of just halfway committed to Christ. They, they you know, they're, they're not all the way in, but they're not all the way out. They're too holy to enjoy sin, but yet too righteous uh, to abstain from sin. And so they're constantly in that struggle. And, and that's a miserable experience. When we wholly give ourselves over, this is something we don't always think about, but if I just fully get surrendered to the Lord, there's a lot of joy. There's a lot of enjoyment in that. Uh, it's almost like a burden is lifted off, off of you because no longer are you taking charge of your life, you're giving it over to Christ. And so when we don't do that, we lose that enjoyment. But then also, we have this yo-yo spiritual experience. If you're not fully grabbing hold of Christ and everything that He is, uh, these sins are, are constantly going to be coming back, and you're going to be constantly falling into sin, repenting of it, coming back, maybe having a little bit of success, and then falling back into sin, and you're going to have the same experience as the Israelites had in the book of Judges. The idea is that we don't just give a little bit over to Christ or and give Him a little bit here and a little bit there, but we give it all to Him all at once and fully surrender to Him if we want to avoid that yo-yo experience. But then, thirdly, if we're not wholly committed to the Lord, it's going to affect the next generation. Whether it's our own children or the younger people in our church who see uh, our actions and see how we're living, uh, they know when we're being hypocritical. They know when we're not fully serving the Lord, when we're just saying the words, when we're just saying uh, the right words, but not really putting it into action. When they know that we're holding on to things that we shouldn't be holding on to, and, and they see that, that drives them away. And, and that leaves a bad example. It, it, it says to them, you know, why am I even going to... Uh, Holy, why, was, why should I wholly commit myself to Christ? My parents didn't do it, or, or you know, the elders in the church didn't do it. I see, see all the sin that's in their lives. Uh, it leaves a very, very bad uh, influence and example, and, and, it, and it can cause the next generation to fall away. You know, they have enough evil influences in their lives. They don't need the bad examples of Christians to drive them away even further. And so these are some things to think about. It is just imperative that we don't leave any any uh, don't leave any stone unturned. We don't 
leave any corners in our lives still dark and we need everything brought under the brilliance of the light of Jesus Christ and to take him on fully for all that he is and just to enjoy him on a daily basis fully surrendered to him living for him loving him with all of our heart well hopefully this uh, devotion was helpful to you i thank you guys for watching the video hope you guys have a great day love you guys god bless